Okay, so this is, uh, now I'm going to talk about regression classification with linear models. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is a very important uh, lecture and it's also going to be very long. So for sure we won't finish it today. Uh, the idea here is uh, we want to go beyond the usual the methods that we have seen that was KNN or decision trees and introduce a more modular approach to machine learning. Okay, uh, so I'm going to talk about, so I'm going to talk about uh, regression here today. I talk about linear regression, basis expansion, regularization, uh, talk about gradient descent for optimization briefly, and then go to classification. Uh, <laughs> and we had a class, we talk about linear classification, we talk about the, uh, how we should define a loss function for classification. And then at the end, I talk about stochastic gradient descent. So uh, let me just, uh, there's a question, but let me uh, move a little bit ahead and then uh, that we, we will have a good time for questions. So here the idea is that, okay, let's go back to what machine learning is or what a machine learning algorithm is doing. So we can think about it as that we have a input which can have different forms that goes through some box which we can call it predictor or model. And that box does some processing on the input. And that box can be summarized by saying that it is a function of X. So F of X uh, is this processing that happens of the input. And then we get an output out of it, which is the predicted output of this predictor or this model says that if you give me X, why is the true value, the value that I would say for this task that you gave me. But then we have a true value of it, which is the target, which in general is not exactly the same as the predicted output. So there would be an error between Y and T. So if it is a classification, Y and T, each of them is a label. Uh, one is orange, the other is apple. If it's a regression, these are both numerical values. So one thing, y is five, t is, for example, 5.3. So there is some difference. Now uh, we need to have a way to think about how to compare y is our predicted value and the target, the true value, the target value. Uh, how essentially we want to answer the question of how bad is there a difference? Is predicting apple instead of orange a bad thing? or not, so I guess it is not a good thing. Uh, but uh, for example, if we have a case that uh, we predict 5.3 instead of five, how bad is it? Uh, or for example, if is it better or worse than predicting 4.3, for example? So uh, do we have a concept of loss or loss function which basically says that if we predict Y instead of T, how much, how bad it is. So we will see that uh, a big part of this lecture is about talking about a choice of model, which is an, another way of saying that what kind of Fs, function Fs we choose here. And also another part of the lecture is that how this loss function should be selected. And by different ways of talking about constructing F, this pro the processing on input data, and how we measure the error, the loss function, we get different type of algorithms. And you see that, I mean, for most of the lectures in this class, uh, we are basically talking about different, different choices of model, or this function F, and different choices of loss functions. For example, neural network would be, we will see in a few lectures, would be one special type of models, which are different from the model that I'm going to talk about today. But the loss function will be essentially the same loss function that we use in this lecture. And then in another lecture, for example, uh, we have support vector machines, 
We have election support vector emissions SVMs, which uh, the model would be the same as, say, the model that we talk about today, uh, but the loss function would be different. So this becomes more clear uh, soon, hopefully. So, yeah, so this is basically summarizing uh, what I talked. Uh, I go through it briefly. So, so far we talked about procedures like KN and decision trees, but for the remainder of the course, we talk about the model, which is describing the relationship between variables of interest, like essential input and output, uh, and also how input should interact in the computation of output. The final loss function, which is quantifying how bad the fit to the data is. We say why, but how bad it is if the truth is T. And then another thing I didn't talk about is that we possibly choose something called regularizer, which is saying how much we prefer different uh, candidate models or explanation of data before actually seeing data. So uh, this is somehow a way to incorporate uh, what we think simpler models are. So regularizer can be thought of, we say that well, in the case of trees, this, those are not regularization, but in the case of trees, we say that simpler trees are, we prefer. Here we talk about the procedure saying that this type of models, these F functions, we prefer them to another F functions before seeing the data. Of course, when we see data, it should be a kind of trade-off between the models that we prefer a priori and how data fits, how well data fits the model or how model fits the data. Another component of this approach is that uh, we need to find a model. Okay, so we define a model, we define loss function. Now we fit the model that minimizes the loss function and satisfy some constraints and penalty that is imposed by a regularizer, often using some kind of optimization algorithm. So we use an optimizer in order to uh, fit the model. And then uh, by mixing and matching these modular components, uh, we get a lot of different machine learning algorithms. Like if we change the model from linear, which I talk about today, to something more complicated, we get neural networks, for example. Or we change the loss function, we get something like support vector machines. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking that what kind of skills you need to learn here, a lot of skills. But first, the general idea of modular approach to ML. Then the, what's the role of the model? So what is the linear model? And then how we can make them more powerful and flexible. That is one way that we talk about uh, in this lecture. The concept of regularization is important. The other is that the concept of loss function, which is uh, essentially, we, uh, and also the concept of what's the relation of the loss function and the decision problem that you want to solve. And you need to know some of the loss functions that are suitable for regression problems, some of them for classification. And then uh, we have this maximum likelihood interpretation of these loss functions uh, that will become clear soon. And also the opt two optimization methods, stochastic gradient descent and gradient descent for optimizing these models. Okay, so uh, we, let's start, well, we talk about supervised learning setup, just let's, uh, formalize it again. So in, in supervised learning, we have a target T, which is called response or outcome or output or class in case of classification. And then there are features or inputs or covariates that are denoted by X. So X is input, T is a target value. And then uh, we want to learn a function from the space X inputs to output space, such that uh, which we denote it by function F. So we have function of F of X, which gives us a value of Y. And the goal is to make this uh, Y's close to the target T's that uh, we have observed or we have collected. So what are these T's? So this is based on some given data D, which is in the form of this couples of Xi's and Ti's. And we have I, N of them. 
1, 2 to n of them. So maybe one note that I want to say is that uh, here I, I may switch between y and t. So I use y as output, t is also as a target. Uh, usually I try to be careful to use t as the data that is given to us and y as the prediction of the, uh, our model. And the goal is to make t and y close to each other. I think the slides would be compatible with that. Uh, but when I write it, I may just use y's instead of t sometimes. Uh, and that's, that's a con kind of common thing in machine learning literature. So it's good to see other ways that people may write. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, all clear? Oh yeah, so okay, so there is a question here. Just, uh, yeah. Um, so my question was from before the break actually, um, but I did, like I typed it in the chat, but uh, it wasn't seen, I guess. It was about decision trees and what we would do uh, if the unknown value that we have is on a continuous variable. Because if it's a discrete variable, we can uh, give it just another value, which is unknown, but what if it's continuous? Yeah, I guess that the, the heuristic that people do is just consider as a, a discrete unknown value. So they treat it as a binary features that if it is unknown, then uh, that's a decision. Like that value is unknown. So for unknowns, we do that thing. Uh -huh. So um, you leave, um, you just set a default value for the continuous value that is actually unknown and then put yeah. uh, a separate discrete one? Yeah, okay. yeah. I guess that's what we did. Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's start from regression with linear models. Uh, in next time session, uh, I'm, I'm not sure we can finish it, but the next session we talk about the classification. So regression, uh, the problem is that the predicted output should be is real value essentially. Uh, so let's talk about different components of regression model. Now uh, regression uh, in this modular approach. So first I want to talk about model, uh, and then I talk about the loss function, and then talk about the optimization of it. Also I talk about regularization. So let, in the model, in, we use linear model here which basically says that uh, we connect or relate the input to output through a lean, this re linear relationship. So what is the linear relationship? It says that f of x, which is giving us y, is uh, a summation of wj's and xj's. xj's would be uh, each dimension of the input and w's would be called weights. And then we have also a constant B, which is called bias. So this is a linear model you have seen probably high school or something similar to that, uh, or maybe first course in calculus. So uh, we use this notation that Y is called the prediction of the model, W's is called base, uh, weights, B is the bias or intercept, uh, and Sometimes people just, as you will see, consider W's and B all together as weights instead of giving them different names. But here at least I separate it for now. And in the next lecture, or the next lecture I talk about bias variance trade-off, this bias doesn't have anything obvious to do with that one. So they are separate. W and B together is called parameters of this linear model. And these are the things that we actually, in learning process, we want to find in order to have a good fit. And the hope is that our prediction is close to the target. So we want Y to be close to T. So this is the linear model. So just let's see how it looks like. If we have only one feature, so X is one dimensional. So we have Y is equal to WX plus B. And this looks essentially like this red line here. Different choices of W's gives different slopes and different choices of B's shows how when we pass at X equal to zero, 
uh, where, where we are passing the y-axis. So if this is y-axis, uh, so I guess here is like almost point three maybe. So the bias here is uh, point say three, for example. So why is linear in X? We can extend this concept to higher dimensions. So X can be, X belongs to RD, our capital D. And then uh, the relation, which can be, which was written as a summation, can also be written in this uh, vector form, which would be W is would be W trans, Y will be W transpose X plus B. So note that the dimension of B, dimension of W should be the same as dimension of X, right? We have D X's, D dimensional X. So we have, we have vector D dimensional vector W described. And again, Y is linear in X. Okay, so let's see. So there's an issue with the feedback. Uh, let's see if everyone is actually muted or not. Huh. I think everyone is mute here. Do you still hear it? Hmm. Okay, that's strange, but I, yeah, I'm trying to get a, maybe a new, better microphone that might solve the problem, but I guess in the next 10 minutes, we can't do much about it. Um, okay, so this is a linear model for one dimensional and visualization for D dimensional. So here is the case of uh, two-dimensional axis like x1 and x2. So it defines a plane. If it is more than two dimensions, it would be a hyperplane in general. So a uh, hyperplane is a linear. So it is good to talk about the, uh, the relation between weights and how the line looks like in uh, essential data space. So left figure, X and Y. This is the relation between inputs and outputs. So exactly as what we had in the previous slide. But then the, the right figure is the weight space, which is X axis, which is not X of the input, but just uh, this X co first coordinate is, this is a class. Uh, Okay, so W is, this is W and the y-axis is the bias here. And essentially there is a mapping between the choice of weight and bias and how that line looks like in the data space. So just let's look at uh, one example. Suppose I choose this point, whose W is zero and bias is one. So what do we expect of that line? So if you go through it, we see that this is coming this one. Uh, this would be this green line. So this green line, the slope is almost zero. It's almost a flat line, but it has a bias, which is equal to 1.5. If I choose another point that, for example, uh, W is one and the bias is a negative of 0.5, uh, we get this line, which has a slope that is higher, but its bias is going to be the same value, it could be 0.5. So there is a kind of relation between weight space uh, and the data space. Like when we're moving the weights in that weight space, we get some different lines or in general hyperplanes in the data space. Okay, so uh, let's go back to what we have or we'll kind of uh, talk about it again. So we have a data set, D, capital D, uh, which is a form of X, I's and T, I's when I is equal to 
uh, one to n. So we have n different data points. And uh, each of x's are p dimension. And I mean, it might be a bit confusing because I'm using the same p with different fonts for data sets and the dimension, but they look a bit different. So these two, this d and this calligraphic d are not the same. So one is data set, the other is dimension. T is a real valued number and is our target or response. And then uh, the goal, of course, is to predict T with a linear function of X. So as I mentioned already, so Y I's, our prediction for say X I is that I multiply X I with W. So W transpose X I, add the bias to it to get Y I. So that would be our prediction of the, tar the, va the true val the value of X I. But the true value would be the target value that we have in our data set would be ti. So there is a difference between these two. And uh, the idea is that to make this difference as small as possible. Which another way of saying it is that we want to find the best line, which is described by the parameters, w and b, that fits these data points very well. So how does it look like? So in this case, we have features, one dimensions, and Y responses, we have these data points that you see they're noisy. And then we want to find this line, the red line that passes through them and minimize some uh, form of error. Now the question is that how we should quantify the best fit to this line. And, uh, I think maybe this is a good point to stop because it's because people will start coming in. Uh, but we continue this in the next session. Uh, is there any quick question that you have? 